Hello, this is Reverend Robert Jones, and welcome to another edition of Blues Chronicles. Today we meet a legendary blues man who was so good, he competed with himself for the same gig, Josh White. Joshua Daniel White was born February 11, 1914, in Greenville, South Carolina. At the age of seven, Josh White witnessed his father being beaten brutally by sheriff deputies. The beating was so severe that essentially it robbed the family of their father as he died in a mental institution in 1930. Consequently, at eight years old, young Josh was hired out as a lead boy for several blind musicians. And that is how he learned to play guitar. At the age of 16, young Josh was recruited to record for the ARC record label, but they needed permission from his mother since he was underage. Her one requirement was that Josh would have to perform sacred music. He performed under the name Joshua White, the Singing Christian. By the early 30s, the label wanted him to perform blues, so he recorded secretly under the name Pinewood Tom. Thus, Josh had two identities. In 1938, a Broadway casting director was looking for someone who could sing and play the guitar. He was casting for a play called John Henry. We were undecided about who could play the part. Some liked Pinewood Tom, while others liked recordings by Josh White. Needless to say, they were surprised to find out that they were one and the same. Josh White's arrangements give new life to old spirituals with deep bends and melodic runs. Josh White became a frequent visitor to the White House and Franklin Roosevelt's favorite folk singer. And his music and style were influential to musicians as diverse as Bob Dylan, Harry Belafonte, and Richie Havens, just to name a few. Audiences in the late 30s were fascinated by his mix of charisma and great music. In the 1940s, Hollywood came calling, like this scene from The Crimson Canary. White was already beginning to show some of the trademarks of his showmanship, with one foot on a chair and a lit cigarette behind his ear. And even though his music was founded in blues and spirituals, pretty soon Josh White began to diversify into folk songs, old show tunes, and especially songs of protest. Paint peeling off my wall, dirt piling in the hall, ice on the pipes, but it was no songs like Landlord, Land Free and Equal Lord, Blues, Land Uncle Lord, Sam Says, and rock, Strange Fruit that eventually got him in trouble with the House Un American Activities Committee. This film from Josh Live in Sweden shows popularity went beyond the United States, and even the cigarette behind his ear could draw applause. In this concert film in 1962, Josh shows complete mastery of the guitar. But by 1969, Josh White had suffered three heart attacks, had ulcers, and suffered from psoriasis that left his fingers bleeding after every performance. September 5th, 1969, he died in New York City on an operating table after unsuccessful surgery to repair his heart valves. Number 12 train. Though Josh White influenced literally dozens of musicians, to this day no one interprets his music better than his son and my friend, Josh White Jr. For Blues Chronicles, this is Reverend Robert Jones.